We're in the midst of a sermon series entitled uh, From Curses to Blessing. We spent the first part of the series talking about cursing, and we're uh, spending this part of the sermon series talking about blessings. So today, we're going to talk about generational blessings. And um, I'm going to go through the entire book of Genesis. Of Genesis, my God. The entire chapter of Deuteronomy 33 from the Common English Bible, because it's a version that we can all understand. And um, just kind of walk you through. I was so amazed when I, when I was studying generational blessing and this scripture came up, this chapter came up, because I've never really noticed that Moses blessed the, the tribes of Israel before he died. Uh, the end of Deuteronomy is when Moses knows that he's about to die and he's trying to prepare the people for his departure. So verse 33, starting with verse one, chapter 33, starting with verse one. This is the blessing that Moses, the man of God, gave the Israelites before he died. He said, the Lord came from Sinai, which is a mountain. From Seir, he shone like the dawn on us. From Paran mountain, he beamed down. Thousands of holy ones were with him. His warriors, he's talking about angels, were next to him, ready. Yes, those who love the nations, all his holy ones, the angels, were at your command. They followed your footstep. They got moving when you said so. So he's talking about God being the Lord of hosts, and he had a vision of the angelic Lord of hosts. He saw the angels. He saw the warring angels who... who, who um, does whatever God tells them to do. Verse four, Moses gave the, the instruction to us, his prized possession of Jacob's assembly. Remember these were the 12 sons of Jacob, the 12 tribes of Jacob. A king shall rule in Jezreel when the people's leaders gathered there, when Israel's tribes were one. And so he's saying a king uh, came to rule in Jezreel. Jezreel is another name for Israel. When the people's leaders gathered there, when the Israel tribes were one. So he's speaking to the whole nation. And then he starts the series of blessings. He says, verse six, I pray that Reuben lives, doesn't die, though his numbers are so few. It appears that Reuben didn't have a lot of descendants. And uh, Reuben's name mean behold the son. And that was Leah was his mother. And she named him Reuben, behold the son, because she was so pleased that she had given her husband Jacob a son. And, and um, so he blessed Reuben with a prevailing spirit, which, which when faced with obstacles, and he blessed him life and longevity, that his number, that he lives, that he doesn't die though his numbers are few. So he wanted him to be fruitful. He wanted his people, his, his descendants to be fruitful. And he wanted them to live long lives and, uh, and, and prevail throughout whatever they faced because they were a small tribe. Moses said to Judah, Lord, listen to Judah's voice. Bring him back to his own people. Strengthen his hands. Be his help against every enemy. And uh, this is a blessing of praise and worship and evangelism. Judah is a tribe that Yeshua's uh, lineage came from. Judah means praise. And um, Judah is why, I mean, that's why we call Jesus the Lion of Judah. The, every tribe had their own symbol. And the symbol for Judah was a lion. This is a blessing of praise and worship and evangelism. It's a blessing of power and strength and might. Verse eight. Then he told Levi, give me your Thuman to Levi. Give your Thuman to Levi, your Urim to your faithful one. The one who you tested at Massa, the one you challenged by Meribah's water. That means to people when, when the water was bitter, he's going back to, when the water was bitter and he had to touch the water to make the water drinkable for them while they were in the, in the wilderness. The one who said of his own mother and father, I don't consider them as such of their siblings. I don't recognize of their own children. I don't know them who obeyed your words and who guarded your covenant. 
Levi was the tribe that the priests came from. And he's talking about the covenant. He's talking about the miracles that happened to Levi. But he's talking about when he says, your Thuman and your Urim making good decisions because they would ask a question and then throw them out. And then by the Thuman and the Urim, whichever one came out, it would be the answer. God would answer them through that. So when you need to make decisions, he's saying, use them. They teach your case laws to Jacob, your instruction to Israel, which he's talking to the nation. You teach them the laws, you teach them God's instruction. They hold sweet incense to, incense to your nose. He had trained the priest to go into the temple and bring up incense. Put the entirely burn off on your altar. They made offerings of sacrifice. So he's talking about how they did all their priestly duties. And then he said, I pray that the Lord blesses Levi's strength, favors his hard work, and crushes the insides of his enemies so that those who hate him can't fight anymore. Now that's a prayer of protection. And that's a blessing of protection. So he talked about, he said he blessed um, Levi with wisdom and good judgment. He blessed them to have covenant loyalty. He blessed them with favor and victory against their enemies. And um, so that's a powerful blessing right there. But that I, I underlined the last one. I pray that the Lord blesses his strength and favors his hard work and crushes the insides of his enemies so that those who hate him can't fight anymore. Verse 11, 12, I'm sorry, we're up to verse 12. Then he said to Benjamin, the Lord's dearest one rests safely on him. The Lord always shields him. He rests on God's chest. Now, these blessings are prophetic. They're also a prayer and a blessing. It's all wrapped up into one. And so when, when Moses and Jacob was blessing the tribes, they used metaphors, they used images, they used analogies, they used similes. So they all, all of those words represented something. And so wouldn't it be nice to have the Lord rest safely on you 24 seven? We pray that to cover Reverend Fletcher, that the spirit of God would rest on him, that the spirit of healing would rest in that room. That's what we want. We want the Lord to be at peace when he's with us and not striving with us trying to get us to do right. He prayed that the Lord would always shield them and, and, and to rest on his chest, to rest on his heart. So this is a blessing of the Lord's presence, a blessing of Adonai's intimacy, a blessing of protection. That's a beautiful blessing. So when you start thinking about writing blessings for your family members or writing blessings for your children, go back and analyze this and, I'm, and use this. I'll send you the PDF of this. Use this as a guideline and let the Holy Spirit lead you so you'll know how to bless your children for generations to come. Then he said to Joseph, I speak that his land is blessed by God. There's that word again, land being blessed, land being healed with heaven's gifts from above, heaven's gifts from above with the deep water stretching out underneath, gifts coming down, gifts coming up. 14, with the gifts produced by the sun, with gifts generated by the moon, with the best fruit from ancient mountain, with the gifts of eternal hills, with the gifts of earth and all that fills it and the favor of the one who lives in Sinai. That's a rich blessing. I pray, he's praying again, that all these rest on Joseph's head, on the crown of that prince among brothers. A firstborn bull, that's how majestic he is. A wild ox horns, those are his horns. With them, he, go, he gores all people completely to the far ends of the earth. His horns are Ephraim's tens of thousands. His horns are Manasseh's thousands. So this is a blessing of bountiful gifts and favor and royalty, blessings of power, strength, and victory. He, the land is blessed, blessed when dew replenishes the land. So he's saying that he hopes he's blessing them for the land to yield, whatever land they live on, to yield bountiful crops. He said, and, and here's another misnomer that people like to think. People like to say that, 
there is equality in the Bible and I want somebody to show it to me because God blesses according to the measure that he wants to give us according to what we can handle. And he says right here, did he, Ephraim and Manasseh were Joseph's sons. He said, jo Ephraim would have 10,000, but Manasseh would just have thousands. That's not a blessing of equality. None of these blessings of the, from Jacob or Moses were equal. They were all based on the, the capacity of each of the people to receive. God blesses based on our capacity to receive. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I hope you all get that. He blesses on our capacity to receive. <clears throat> the horns represent strength, power, and protection. I, I could do a whole sermon series on horns in the Bible. It is used as an analogy for many things, but so he's, he's, that's when I said strength, power, and victory. That's what the horns represent, okay? Next verse. Then he told Zebulon, celebrate when you are out and about. And he blessed Issachar and Zebulon together. Issachar, celebrate when you're at home in your tents. They call all sorts of people to the mountain where they offer right sacrifices. It will be a house of prayer for all people. It's true. They are nourished on the sea's abundance. They are nourished on measured treasures in the sand. So this is a blessing of evangelism, worship, and wisdom. Blessings of, prayer, of being an intercessory prayer, the house of prayer, and um, also blessings of prosperity and provision. Seas abundance, buried treasures in the sand. Those are all analogies for provision and prosperity. Bedjet treasure is a metaphor for wisdom and or wealth. The people could refer to the Gentiles, but Gentiles were already among them, so it should, should be all for all people. And um, a lot of times when people say Mount Zion, they, they think about it as being the house of prayer. And, and the, the Samaritan woman talked about this. You say we should worship on this mountain and we say this mountain. Location has nothing to do where you worship. You can worship God 24-7. And that's what Jesus was trying to tell her that day. Next verse. Then he said to Gad, my Gad's broad lands will be blessed. He lives like a lion. He rips an arm, even a head. He chose the best part for himself because there where the commander's portion was, the leaders of the people gathered together. Gad executed the Lord's justice and the Lord's judgment for Israel. This is a blessing of power. Look how many times there was a blessing of power, strength, might, protection, and prosperity and favor. Blessing of discernment, wisdom, and election. Uh, blessing of good judgment. Lions were uh, known to be fierce and powerful. They mark and protect their, their territory. We call lions king of the jungle. So, if he so the lion of Judah, that whole metaphor of lions, plays out powerfully in these blessings that Moses uh, gave to the people that day. Next verse. Then he told Dan, Dan is a lion cub, a baby lion. He jumps up from Basham. This is a stealth blessing of, of power, strength, and might. Even though you may, you may appear young, you may appear uh, weak, but lions are like cats and they can surprise you. They are, they're from the cat enemy and like cats. <laughs> they are cats. And Basham, it was an area um, um, that, that was next to Mount Hermon. And, and remember, lions roam around seeking to divide their enemies. When lions mark their territory and they say, this is my territory, anybody that comes, in, uh, comes up into the lion's territory. He's saying, if you come into my territory, you're gonna have to deal with me. So this is, the, this is a blessing of, of power, strength, and might. We're just about there. Next verse. Then he told Naphtali, you are full of favor. Ooh, I would love the Lord to tell me that. You are full of favor, overflowing with the Lord's blessing. Go possess the west and the, west and the south. Blessing of favor and prosperity again, the conquering war spirit. Go take your territory. I got your back. And you're overflowing with blessings. That's a good blessing. Finally told Asher, 
Asher is the most blessed of sons. I pray he and his brother's favorite, one who dips his foot in fine oil. I pray that your deeds boat, your dead boats are iron and copper and that your strength lasts all your days. Another blessing of favor and prosperity, blessing of wealth and abundance, blessing of protection, blessing of strength and a blessing of longevity. Amen. So he concludes the chapter with this. Jezreel, which is Israel, no one compares to God. He lives through heaven to he, he rises, I'm sorry. He rises through heaven to help you. There is none like you. This is uh, one of the songs that they sing in synagogue every Saturday. Mia Mocha, who is like you, God, there is no one like you. No one compares to you. Mia Mocha. He rises through the heaven to help you, rise majestically through the clouds. The most ancient God is a place of safety. The eternal arms are a support. He drove out the enemy before you. He commanded, destroy them. So Israel now lives in safety. Jacob's res residence is secure in a land full of grain and wine where the heavens drip dew. Wow. So he's giving this, this picture, these word pictures of a mighty God who comes from heaven and who, who saves them, who um, destroys their enemies and um, their land is full of prosperity. The land is full of grain. The land is full of wine. The heavens drip dew, just enough water and, and, and replenishment so that the crops are bountiful. Verse 29, happy are you, Israel, who is like you? You are people saved by the Lord. We are people saved by the Lord. We are people saved by the Lord. He's our shield that helps us. He is our majestic sword. Our enemies will come crawling on their knees to us, but we will stomp on their backs. I switched it because I personalized it. These are powerful words that Moses left. You can take this scripture and you can personalize it. And you can say, the, you can say no one compares like my God who rise through the heaven to help me, who rise majestically through the clouds. The most ancient God is my place of safety. His eternal arms are my support. He drove out my enemy before me. He commanded the angels to destroy them. So now I live in safety. I am secure in him. I live in a land full of grain and wine where the heavens drip dew. I am so happy because who is like you, O oh Lord? Mia Mocha, who is like you? I am saved by you, Lord. You are my shield that helped me. You are my majestic sword. My enemies come crawling to their knees to me and you will stomp their backs. Amen. Next verse. I think that's the last verse, right, Jonah? Yes. I already shared with you that Jezreel is a, a, a nickname for Israel, and there are many names that come out of that, so we can go on. Next. Go back one. I wanna, I'm going to talk about blessings and favor just for a moment. Blessings of God comes with the favor of God. Notice in this text, and I really encourage you to go back and study and read this text, Read it in a version that you can understand. I know a lot of you all like King James Version, but you, when you're trying to understand the scripture, you, your best understanding is in your own language. So read it in a version you can understand. The, 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 the Living Translation, the Common English Bible, the, even the NIV, but I, I chose the Common English Bible so that it was easy to understand. The blessings of God come with, with the favor of God. The blessings is the empowerment to prosper. Notice how many times the blessings refer to prosperity, land, abundance, land, dew, wine. Those are provisions so that you can have all of your needs met. So God gives us this empowerment when he blesses us. God gives us the ability to prosper by opening doors of opportunity. Blessings 
favor, and opportunity. Blessings come with favor. Favor comes with opportunity. Opportunity produces prosperity. That's why I have the graphic on the right. So when God blesses you, favor comes with that blessing. Favor open doors of opportunity that you can't, that you will not have access to. And if when you walk through those doors, it produces prosperity. Many people have the ability to do something, but if you don't have the favor of God resting on your life for, to um, open doors of opportunity, you will never be prosperous. How many people do you know that can sing better than some people that have recording albums and have made millions of dollars? How many people do you know that can play much better than some of the professional athletes? How many people do you know that are much smarter than some of the professors? So you knew favor brings open doors. And when God opens a door, that's an opportunity for you to prosper. Now, if you sit there and look at the open door and wonder if you should go in and never go through the door, then you're not going to prosper. But when, when, and sometimes, go to the next slide. Sometimes favor will come, an open door will come, and you don't even recognize an open door. Because hmm, I remember one time the Lord said to me, don't let the enemy talk you out of your blessing. I think I need to say that again. Don't let the enemy talk you out of your blessing. Sometimes a blessing will come in a way that doesn't look like a blessing. And the enemy can, can tell you, you know, the enemy, is, he, he, he specializes in lies and deceit. He'll say, oh, that's not from God. Can you believe that? That's not real. Don't even waste your time being bothered with that. Oh, they want you to do that. Why you got to do that? The enemy can, th can give you a million reasons why you can't, why you shouldn't go through that door that God has opened for you. And the door may be just cracked. It may not be flung wide open. It could be just cracked. But the door, a cracked door is an open door. A cracked door is an open door. So if you see that cracked door, then you have to have the holy boldness to pull that door open and walk through that door, no matter what you what it looks like. Because remember, the stress and blessing, um, blessing <laughs> pressing and blessing, sometimes you got to stress a little bit to get the blessing. The blessing doesn't come easy. So I summarize the sermon by saying, the blessings of God, the fog comes with the favor of God. That's when you get the fog. And then when you get the fog, that's when you get the prosperity. Amen. I want to end this sermon with a, a couple of blessings that I wrote. The first one is a blessing prayer, a kingdom generation blessing prayer. I've been encouraging you to start thinking about learning how to write and speak blessings rather than curses. That's been the whole purpose of this sermon series, to focus on blessings. And um, I started writing, I wrote this prayer a while ago and I pulled it up and I, I, I rewrote it again over the, uh, over the last few days. And I want you to think about this prayer as I read it and you'll have it. And you can take it and you can alter it to fit your own particular needs. Most of this, these, this, this prayer is written on scripture. And you'll notice that as we go through it. Elohim, God, thank you for daily provisions that enable us to leave an inheritance to our descendants for generations to come. Every one of us should want to have a, leave a legacy, a legacy of good a legacy of love, a legacy of provision for our, our family members. Abba, grant us an abundance of wisdom and knowledge and joy as you perfect that which concerns my family and descendants. One of the things, one of the things that we do in our culture that's different from Judaism, Judaism prays for the community and for the future and for their descendants all the time. We focus on ourselves and here and now. We have to change our focus. El Elyon, the Most High God, we earnestly seek your face daily and remember that you give us power to get well. If you seek his face, if you stay in his presence, if you let him rest on your chest, 
then the blessings come with that and the blessings bring the favor and the favor brings prosperity. Jehovah Nisa, the Lord, my banner, God of power and justice, thank you for breaking all the generational curses in my family and descendants that have prevented us from living in love and peace and harmony and health and prosperity. El Olam, everlasting God, may you establish your covenant of blessings with my family and descendants and give us treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. Hidden riches can be wealth or wisdom. Yeshua, you said, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Please create in us a pure heart and renew in us a righteous and holy spirit to walk close with you daily. The Lord brought this back to me last night and again this morning, this scripture, and he told me to share with you, God looks at our heart and he sees what's in our heart. And if he sees something in our heart that is not clean, that is not pure, he, and if he brings it to us, then we're supposed to confess and repent and we're supposed to turn, we're supposed to turn that over to the Lord. And that's why whenever I pray, I say, Lord, create in me a clean heart and a righteous and a Holy Spirit. So we want to walk with God. If, 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 if we're walking around with hatred and content and malice in our heart, our prayers will not be heard. If we're walking around holding grudges full of anger and resentment, our prayers will not be heard. So we have to get before God and tell God to search our hearts. And if our hearts are not pure, to show us what's not pure, so we can turn that over to God. We can't break generational curses if we are a source of curse. We can't do that. So we got to be in right standing with God. We got to we got to be on the right side of God for these blessings to be to be heard and for these curses to be broken. Abba, thank you for blessing those who are good and righteous in their heart. My family and descendants stand before you today, expecting a bountiful daily blessings for present and future generations. May Jehovah Jireh provide that which is good for us. May our land yield bountiful and fruitful increases for generations to come. May Abba liberally supply my family and descendants with every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. May we prosper and be in good health even as our soul prosper. May my family and des descendants experience the favor of Adonai's righteousness, goodness, grace, greatness, glory, and generosity. May we pleasure in his presence, favor, and mercy. May we shout for joy and be glad and continually say, let the Lord be magnified as we shower these blessings upon Adonai. Now notice before we were saying, may Adonai bless us. Remember, God blesses us, we bless the Lord. Now this prayer is shifting to us sending blessings up to God. Blessed be Adonai who takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Blessed be Adonai, who daily loads us with benefits and bountiful blessings. Blessed be Adonai, who is the God of our deliverance and salvation. Blessed be Adonai, who is our son and our shield. Blessed be Adonai, who bestows grace, favor, shekinah glory, honor, prosperity, and peace upon us. Blessed be Adonai, who withholds no good thing from those who walk uprightly before him. Blessed be Adonai who is active and alert and watches over his word to perform it for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. These are the scriptures for that. We can keep going. And this last thing I want to share with you was oh, two. Ooh, it's two more. Okay, cool. The special blessing. May Adonai bless you in the name of Abba, your holy father who gives you an everlasting love, who knows all your thoughts, catches every tear, hears every whisper, who makes a way when there is no way and brings streams in your desert. May Adonai bless you in the name of Yeshua, your savior, whose blood has set you free from sin, whose death set you free from darkness, whose mission has given you eternal life. 
May Adonai bless you with the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit, whose almighty power empowers you to defeat the enemy and to soar like an eagle over life's obstacles, whose presence manifests the glory of God and whose peace surpasses all understanding. This is a blessing you can use as a parent. This is a blessing you can use as a mentor. This is a blessing you can speak over friends. It's a special blessing that's universal that you can speak over anyone that you love. And we end with a guardian angel blessing. May you always have an angel by your side, guarding you, reminding you to keep believing in brighter days, creating ways for your wishes and dreams to come true. May your angel keep developing plans that take you to beautiful places, healing your brokenness, teaching you to love unconditionally, giving you hope and despair. May your angel fortify your strength and Abba's peace perfect peace and serenity. May you always have Abba's desires and the Ruach, Ho Holy, the Ruach Hokadash comfort and Yeshua's courage. May your angel create pathways for wisdom, divine strategy, favor, good health, wealth, riches, and prosperity. Amen. I put this guardian angel blessing on, um, on here so you could have it. Remember I tease you all a lot of time and I say your angels just be standing by, be bored because they don't know what to do because you don't give them nothing to work with. That blessing gives them something to work with. So it gives you, um, it gives them something to do. And so I will send these out after the sermon. I want you all to look at these blessings, study these blessings. You, we, we, we want to become ambassadors of blessings, not curses. And we want to become proficient in speaking blessings over others because our words have what? Power. Our words have power. And we can change our environment. We can change our world. We can change our loved ones by speaking blessings over them. I'm going to end with sharing a story that I read uh, a lady wrote she, she, she's, a, she's a Jew and she said every morning before they went to school, her parents used to put them in a circle and speak blessings of them before they went to school every morning. And she said, and at the older she get, the more she just got so tired of that, that routine. And you know, by the time you get to be a teenager, you know, you have all the answers, your parents don't know anything. And so she said, well, she was so annoyed about how her parents would make them circle up even as teenagers to go and they would speak the blessings over each one of them, a different blessing over each one of them individually before they would go to school every morning. And so she said, and then she got grown and she had her children. And she, and she started looking back over all of the, her family members' lives. And she saw how those blessings that they had spoken over, her parents had spoken over them, had manifested in their lives. And she saw the, and she saw the how she had benefited from those blessings. And guess what she started doing? Circling her children, speaking blessings over them every morning before they went to school because she was securing their future just like her parents had, had secured her future. Amen? This is the word of God. <laughs>